All right, you should have updated your health history and obtained the necessary signatures if you're working on this lab activity, which is lab activity number eight, oral anatomy. You don't need to repeat vitals today unless your previous readings were not with the normal limits. You're gonna use a dental mirror in your non-dominant hand, and you're going to use a cotton tip applicator in your dominant hand. You're going to identify the following on your lab partner as related to the periodontium. We're gonna look at the gingival margin. We're gonna look at the free gingiva. We're gonna look at the free gingival groove. If um, patient, can you please turn to the left? I can see on this side that I can see a definite delineation between this color and this color. And so I know that the free gingival groove is going right through here, which makes this gingiva appear to be edematous, a little bit puffy. It is not. That is a healthy gingiva there. It's just that where the free gingival groove is anchored, it makes this one appear more rounded. Okay, we're gonna look at the interdental papilla or gingiva. We're gonna look at the call. That, the call you can't see, but it's the tooth side of the interdental papilla. We're gonna look at the attached gingiva. The attached gingiva is the gingiva that is firmly bound down and attached to the, to the bone here. The alveolar mucosa. That is this little gutter area. The buccal mucosa. That's the mucosa against the cheek. Labial mucosa. Labial mucosa you have on the maxillary and the mandibular. It's the it's this part of the mucosa that is loose. That it lines the inside of the cheek, lips, and perfect. Now we're gonna look at the tongue. Please stick your tongue out for me. Thank you. We're gonna identify the filiform papilla. The filiform papilla are the lighter whitish ones that are much more small. The fungiform papilla. Those are the ones that look rounded and red. The circumvallate papilla. The circumvallate papilla may or may not be able to be seen. I'm going to take my patient's tongue. It's really hard to see this if your patient lifts their tongue up. So if they can lay it down flat, it is these little um, circles against the back that are in a V-shape. The foliate papilla. If I retract the tongue to one side, this is the location of the foliate papilla. Perfect. Now we're gonna look at the frenums. We are gonna look at the maxillary and the mandibular anterior. This is the maxillary anterior frenum. I'm retracting the lip here, and this is the part that attaches the buccal mucosa, the labial mucosa to the attached gingiva. If I pull on this outward and I move it back and forth, I can see the frenum move. That's also a great way to identify which is the attached gingiva and which is the buccal or labial or alveolar mucosa. Will you show us that mandibular frenum too? Of course. There's the mandibular frena. And if you can't see it very well, make sure that you extend the lip without hurting them and move it side to side. And that lets you do a little bit of a tension test. One thing that this patient has on the maxillary frenum, maxillary central frenum, is this cute little tissue tag. Not everybody has that. It's a sign of superior intelligence. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna look at the maxillary and mandibular posterior frenums. Okay, those are going to attach around about where the um, premolars are. So if I pull down on here and pull out, I can see there's just a little hint of one right here. And if I move it to different angles, it will sometimes make it really pop up, just like so. So here we are on the other side. Again, if I just have it pulled down and out, I can't see, but if I pull it up and out and move it, then it helps to make it appear 
a little bit more easily. Perfect. So now that we've seen that, the next part of our lab activity is to perform a tension test, which Miss Pierce has already kind of demonstrated. So we're going to perform a tension test on all seven frenums. So you're going to track the lift, cheeks, tongue, and displace the mo mo movable structure laterally. Sorry, guys. You're swinging it side to side just a little bit. While you're doing this, you're going to check for blanching, attachment on the free gingiva, current recession, other signs of disease. If you discover anything significant, you're going to record it under the comments section on the perio chart, which is your tan one. I noticed that my patient has on this mandibular frenum, the frenum attaches quite close to the uh, free gingiva. And what that means <clears throat> is that this frenum may pull a little bit on some of this. Um, and the question, and we see here 